In this lesson, we're going to look at how to solve quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. Now, we've already looked at how to solve quadratic equations by factoring and also by square root property. But what's nice about the formula is that any quadratic equation can be solved by formula. However, if you can find another method that will work, the formula is probably harder to use than the other method. Now that's why we have to learn all the methods. Sometimes factoring is best, sometimes square root property is best, and sometimes the formula is best if nothing else will work. Um, so I'm going to show you eventually how to determine which method is the best to use, but right now let's just focus on learning how to use the formula. So here it is. For a quadratic equation that's in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, we can pick out the a, b, and c, and then they make this formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So it's really important that you understand that it's all over 2a and not just the radical part. It's all over 2a. So now you know where the a, b, and c come from. The a is the coefficient of the x squared term, b is the coefficient of the x term, and c is the constant when everything is on one side of the equal mark. And you need to memorize this formula. There is absolutely no substitute for knowing the formula. There's no way to solve these problems if you don't know the formula, and it won't be given to you on the test. So you really need to spend a few minutes and memorize the formula. So here's our first example. x squared plus 5x plus 3 equals 0. So if you look at a quadratic equation and you decide it cannot be factored, and you decide that the square root property is not a good thing to, to try, then you can start working on a, b, and c. So in this case, a is 1, and b is 5, and c is 3. So now we're going to put x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a and we will plug our a, b, and c straight into this quadratic formula. So here I've got negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. And this is what I do when I have to use the formula. I plug it in and I don't substitute anything or do any calculations in my head. I just plug all the a, b's, and c's in where I can see how everything fits together. Then we go back and simplify. So 5 squared is 25. Minus 4 times 1 times 3 gives us minus 12. And it's all over 2. Now for the next step, 25 minus 12 makes 13. And in this case, this is all there is to do because the 13 cannot be simplified and that means that the whole fraction cannot be simplified. So this is the final answer and if we write it out as two separate answers we get negative 5 plus square root of 13 all over 2 and negative 5 minus square root of 13 all over 2. Here's a new example for us. 4x squared equals 2x plus 7. So in this case, uh, we're not ready to pick out a, b, and c because we have a, we have our x squared term on one side of the equal mark and our other two terms on the other side. So let's get all of our terms together on one side of the equal mark. And notice when I bring a term from one side of the equal mark to the other, it changes sign because really what we're doing is we're subtracting 2x from both sides, we're subtracting 7 from both sides, so when it shows up over here, it shows up with a negative sign. Now, a is 4, b is negative 2, and c is negative 7. So when we plug into the formula, we'll have x equals negative 
b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. So negative negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times 4 times negative 7 all over 2 times 4. So for our first simplification we'll have negative negative 2 makes positive 2. Then under the radical negative 2 squared makes positive 4. Negative 4 times 4 makes negative 16 and negative 16 times negative 7 makes plus 112 and in the denominator 2 times 4 makes 8. Now under the radical we need to combine 4 plus 112 which gives us 116 and we've still got 8 in the denominator. Now in this case 116 uh, contains a, a factor of 4 so we need to simplify that radical 116 is 4 times 29 so the square root of 4 is 2 and the 29 is still under the radical and the 8 is still in the denominator now if you'll notice 2 and 2 and 8 can all be divided by 2 so 2 divided by 2 is 1 2 divided by 2 is 1 and in the, in the denominator 8 divided by 2 is 4 so this is completely simplified now and my two separate answers are 1 plus the square root of 29 all over 4 and 1 minus the square root of 29 all over 4. Okay, now let's solve this one together. 4x squared minus 13x equals negative 3. Okay, so if we move our negative 3 to the left side of the equal mark, we'll have 4x squared minus 13x plus 3 equals 0. It's important to get the zero over here before we start naming our ABC. So now A is 4, B is negative 13, and C is 3. So here we're plugging straight into the formula. Negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2 a. So now negative negative 13 makes positive 13. Under the radical negative 13 squared makes positive 169. 4 times 4 makes 16 and 16 minus 3 makes 48. And in the denominator 2 times 4 is 8. Now simplify under the radical. 169 minus 48 is 121. And the square root of 121 happens to be a whole number. So we end up with 13 plus 11 over 8 and 13 minus 11 over 8. Now it's not really good enough to leave it in this form because these two answers we could go ahead and work out. We have two solutions here. 13 plus 11 over 8 and 13 minus 11 over 8. Okay, now we need to simplify these. 13 plus 11 is 24, and 24 over 8 is 3. And for the other one, 13 minus 11 is 2, and 2 over 8 is 1 fourth. So our two answers simplify down to 3 and 1 fourth. Now, I will call your attention to the fact that if we had tried to factor this, we would have easily been able to factor it and I'll just show you right here we know that it's a trinomial so it's going to make two pairs of binomials so uh, 4x squared we could try 2 times 2 but let's try 4x times 1x the signs need to be the same and they both need to be negative and now 3 times 1 I'm going to arrange like this so that my outer plus inner adds up to negative 13x like I want it to 
And then you can see that our two solutions would be from, from this factor we would get a solution of one fourth and from this factor we would get a solution of three. So that's what we found this way but we probably did a little more work on it with the radicals and whatnot, all of that, than we would have if we just tried to factor. Okay, now I want you to learn to uh, use a calculator to check your work. So let's look at this example. 4x squared equals 2x plus 7. And I believe we've already solved this one previously and we came up with 1 plus the square root of 29 over 4 and 1 minus the square root of 29 over 4. So if I wanted to check these answers, what I could do is use a calculator to get a decimal approximation for each answer. And so on your calculator, I want you to really try this. So actually get your physical calculator out and punch buttons here with me. So I want you to put in 1 plus tw uh, square root of 29 and get an answer and divide that answer by 4. And you should get approximately 1.5963. Now the more decimal places you keep, the closer your answer will get to checking out exactly. And if we do 1 minus square root of 29 all over 4, we'll get negative 1.0963. These are our two uh, answers that we think are correct. And now we're going to plug them into our original equation. So I've copied down the original equation, but instead of x, I put in my 1.5963. So if we do uh, 1.5963 squared and then multiply that answer by 4, we get about 10.1927. And if we do 2 times that number plus 7, we get about 10.1926. Now those answers are the same all the way to the fourth decimal place. So they are actually close enough for us to say that both sides of the, of the equation are the same. And let's make sure the other answer checks out. So I've got 4 times our other answer equals 2 times that number plus 7. And so the left side in this case adds up to 4.8075, and the right side adds up to 4.8074, which is close enough for us to say that they're the same. And let's do one more example together. I've got x squared plus 8x plus 18 equals 0. So a equals 1, b equals 8, and c equals 18. Here's our formula. Now, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And we will simplify under the radical. 8 times 8 makes 64. 4 times 1 times 18 makes 72. And in the denominator, we get 2. Now, 64 minus 72 is actually negative 8. And now we need to simplify this radical because we learned earlier, if you remember, that we cannot leave negatives under the radical. So we'll need to simplify this. 8 is 4 times 2, and the square root of the 4 will be 2, and the square root of the negative will be i. So... The square root of the 4 is 2, and the square root of the negative is i, and there's still a 2 under the radical. Now notice that 8 and 2 and 2 can all be divided by 2. So if I do that, 8 divided by 2 is 4, 2i divided by 2 is 1i, and in the denominator, I had a 1, but there was no need to write the denominator of 1. We never write the denominator when it's a 1. Also notice that because the, this 2 is under the radical, it doesn't play when we're simplifying. It's ju it just sits there. It doesn't participate in the simplifying process. So my two separate answers are negative 4 plus i square root of 2 and negative 4 minus i square root of 2.